Okay. I have just tried out the second bend. Oh, this one's ready to go. Yeah, as soon as it can do this pretty easily, you need to go. Otherwise, you run the risk of really burning it, which I might have done anyway. But anyway, I'm not going to use an inside brace, just the outside. And that right there is the entire process you're supposed to go through. Very quickly move it to your uh, restraining angle. 90 degrees is pretty easy to come by, but if you want a different angle, you got to make a jig to do that. But you get it warm, and you immediately bring it over as soon as it's to the right pliability. Now I have these set entirely too high of a temperature for what you ought to be doing, because I'm in a hurry. And the trade-off of that is you have to keep an eye on it. But here's one I just did five minutes ago, if even. And maybe you can see this, maybe not. Uh, let me try to refocus the camera a bit. Uh, there's a bit less coloration distortion on this than there was on here. Uh, I did this exactly as I did on the other one you just witnessed. There's a, a lot less damage to it. Uh, and it is still sharp into the corner here. And this is just a normal situation that you're supposed to do exactly as demonstrated just now. And this is much stronger. So I think my failure earlier was way too much heat. Because these were on probably for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that's because I was trying to balance between the two heaters and that didn't work out too well. These have, are very imprecise. But quite pliable and that corner is not yielding. Now when I did that I didn't have my angle warmed up at all. And you saw this one I had it sitting on the the line bender here. It's still pretty warm. I'm going to let it do a slower cool this time. And I left this on the line bender too long. I can see a lot of bunching going on right here. I, I don't know if you can see it at all with this angle and this lighting. Um, but it just kind of puckered right in here. Out of it really puckered. It should be fairly smooth. Right there is nice. Pretty sharp. That, way too much heat. But even still. And you can imagine, this is the enclosure of the battery. When is it ever going to be doing this? And having that much stress put on it. This has enough give to it that in the event of a swelling, it's going to flex out like that, but it's not going to be able to put that much leverage on the corner there. So this would be a pretty darn beefy enclosure. I get this material for free. So my question is, would you pay me to make you a battery enclosure out of this material. Now if you're very green and uh, truly believe in the whole notion of carbon footprints, that's a no-brainer. Obviously you're going to prefer that I use used material rather than virgin material. And I can without a doubt tell you that any sign shop in town that actually makes signs, I'm not talking about vinyl shops, but anyone that actually fabricates is going to have an abundance of this, what's called sign white Lexan. So it's uh, Lexan, just like you typically would see in a clear situation. This is white, for obvious reasons. Um, and you can pick it up pretty cheap and free. New or used. Used, absolutely free. But we have so much waste it's disgusting.
Now I'm going on a rant. So I'm going to play around a little bit more, videotape some more. Maybe not right now. Probably I'll get going. But I failed on the first attempt. I am pleased with the second attempt. And what I'm pleased about is normally, as I said, you have these flat. You have uh, a three quarter of an inch across both top and bottom. But I wanted to limit the amount that the inside could stretch and elongate. So by putting it on end, that limited how much of that material would do that. And it came out pretty sharp. I'm, I'm very pleased. So we'll play with better material. Not quite as faded, maybe.